grandpa is bold. My grandpa is real bold, and at 87, he still believes he can do everything he did 60 years ago, like mow the lawn, drive to Florida, and yes, he cleans his gutters. But my grandpa, my bold, strong grandpa, got sick. And for 20 days, he was in intensive care. In addition to the emotional anxiety we felt just not knowing how he would do, we also were so concerned. And so for 20 days, I went to the hospital to track down the doctors, to coordinate with the nurses, to ensure he was getting the best care. And when we got the great news that we could take him home, we looked for a home care partner who could keep me informed so I didn't have to be there every day. Not finding a solution and being an entrepreneur, I created one, and that's tender caring. 50% of agencies report that they do not conduct federal background checks, and families are overwhelmed. They report unknown quality, no choice, and a complete lack of transparency. At Tender Caring, our online platform and mobile experience empowers families to select, manage, and stay informed about their loved one's care. So how do we do it? First, when a family comes to our site, they're greeted by video profiles of the caregivers we work with, talking about their backgrounds, years of experience, and why they got started in care. From there, we help and assist in staffing and scheduling. And after every appointment, our caregivers use the connected caregiving platform to keep families up to date. So whether mom has taken her medication or made it to that doctor's appointment, we deliver peace of mind to families every day. So how do we do it? This market is huge. It's $85 billion a year. And our business model is simple. We charge $20 an hour for every hour served and take a commission on that. To give you a small example, just 3,000 seniors, that's $20 million. And with 40 million seniors in the United States, we think the opportunity is enormous. With $85 billion, there are established players. And I want to take a little bit of time to talk about them. By far, our most traditional competitor are your brick and mortar agencies. And from there, we deliver on choice. But families have talked to us and told us about the revolving door of caregivers that come through, and we empower them to select their caregiver. In search of caregivers and that choice, they often resort to alternatives. Sometimes it's Craigslist or care.com, but there the issue is quality. We have delivered on quality through our rigorous vetting process, and only 5% of applicants make it onto our platform. But not only have we delivered on these needs for choice, and quality, but we've taken it to the next level through our connected caregiving platform. Again, delivering that peace of mind that families are in search of. So now about the team. We talked about that traditional brick and mortar agency, and they're dominated by franchises. At Bain and Company, where I was a management consultant for five years, I led franchise strategy for many of my clients. I understand the dynamics of that business model, and I think our business model empowers us to stay more innovative and agile as we scale. In addition to my work at Bain and Company, I've also deepened my expertise by studying elder care at the Hobson School of Nursing. I'm a graduate of Harvard College and Harvard Business School. Our team brings three critical factors that enable our business model. One is about the quality of care, and B has 17 years of experience delivering home care for seniors. She manages our staffing, recruitment, skill assessments, and developing care, plan, care plans that are relevant to seniors. Our target market is not the seniors themselves, but their children, typically a 40 to 50 year old woman. And so Giovanni has brought innovative approaches for not only informing and targeting that woman, but converting her to a customer. And finally, tech enables every part of our business, whether it's the vetting of caregivers, onboarding of families, or providing a seamless experience for our caregivers to provide that feedback to families. And Caitlin, who has a computer science background from NYU, powers that. And so we're tender caring. Our product, our service is care, our product is peace of mind, and our mission is the future of elder care. Thank you. So where is the business right now? You're launched, you have customers, how many? Yeah, so we are launched, and we, we launched in the last month. And so we do have customers, we do have revenue, but it's still, still small. And what customer acquisition strategies are you using yeah. at the moment? Yeah, so they're, they're kind of two critical factors. So there are traditional lead providers, and we're working with them. We also have a partnership with an assisted living facility in New York, and that's also been a source. What's How are you going to get? I'm sorry. 
I was just, I was just wondering, I mean, I think it's a great service, really important. Just wondering how you're gonna penetrate to the masses. Right, so again, so the, our lead partners are national. Um, and so we're still kind of testing what's the most effective kind of cost per acquisition, but they've been successful thus far. And they can provide us uh, leads uh, from a customer acquisition strategy in kind of all the markets. What does innovation look like from Giovanni, um, your marketing? So it's about using platforms for where these women are. And so if you think about 40 picture women, they actually are on Pinterest, but it's about providing relevant content. So we have things like infographics and fall prevention, which if you look in this market, it's like the same five articles in a dowdy site, but woman sees an infographic on fall prevention, that's innovative, right? They wanna know a company that's doing that. And so that's just one example that we've used to kind of inform customers and stand off from the crowd. Are you doing much with um, online advertising? I'm just wondering because it seems to me that say your grandfather's really healthy and then something bad happens and you go into a panic, it seems like, at least for me, Google would be the first place that I'd go. Is that an approach that you're taking? Uh, I mean, so we, we've done, we, we're focused more, we've done some SEM. We found SEO is more effective for us. Um, people absolutely are searching, right? And so that's where our lead providers also have an online presence and kind of filter through that. I'm just thinking about insurance and, and you know, a lot of people, in fact, I think the, the most popular form of insurance is long-term care. Mm -hmm. So how do you, I mean, that's already built in. So how do you deal with those customers or how do you acquire those customers or can you even? Um, They've already so bought a long-term care program. Right, so, so, there's, so this is traditionally private pay. So our focus at this moment mm -hmm. is kind of non-medical home care. Um, so the majority of people are, are paying out of pocket. Some people do have long-term care insurance and we can process that. Um, but that's kind of more of an enabler to our business. I, uh, I really like the standardized pricing model, actually Thank quite you. a bit, that's uh, appealing. Um, uh, what about acquiring caregivers? Are there, yeah. Has that been fairly straightforward strategies? Yeah, no, no, so, so absolutely. And in our market, there's, there's two key things. One, we really like referrals from our current provider, our current caregivers, and so that's been kind of our most proven source of quality. Um, but again, it's, we haven't had a challenge. We've had, we have hundreds of people in our kind of database. In terms of who we empower to provide, um, that's rigorous, right? And so the, the sourcing of, of, of getting them has not been a challenge. It's all around kind of that vetting process to make sure that they're providing the quality of care that we expect. And when you find the caregivers, uh, isn't there a risk that once they, they start referring outside of you guys and you lose the referrals because they're interacting on a one-on-one -on -one and then find out Absolutely. from somebody else? I mean, how do you make sure that they don't go around you and you don't lose money. No, absolutely. So the risk of disintermediation can exist in this market, right? Um, one of the things, as we talked about, we're really rigorous on quality, and we actually pay our caregivers well. Um, so our caregivers are well compensated. Um, from a family standpoint, we, you can go kind of the Craigslist route, but there's so much anxiety around the coordination. And we have things like um, insurance coverage. So for any kind of liability, that's not a concern using our platform. And in addition to that, we have backup services, right? So we are your partner in care for your family. And so we haven't seen as much disremediation. Do you have advisors? Uh, not yet, not yet, not formal advisors. And then where are you in terms of funding? I'm just curious. So we're bootstrapped for now. I did work at Bain & Company for a while and I'm frankly just cheap as hell. Uh, so so we're, we're, we're able to be bootstrapped. Um, and our business makes money immediately. Um, and so that's, that's the beauty of our model. We haven't needed to, to, to be funding, but we will be, when we scale beyond New York, we will be uh, soliciting funds. So obviously working at Bain and working at creating an early stage startup is very different. So yeah, no. So, what's so the, what's the one about. thing that you've learned that uh, is different and how did you solve that problem? Okay, so, so first I'll, I like to, I'd like to give a little bit of back, my, my background. So I've been hacking since I was 10. And when I, I give the example is that, so my, my dad had a business and ultimately it failed. My parents got divorced, we didn't have much money. Um, one particular example was, but my mom would go to the beach. We didn't have money for concessions, we couldn't afford slushies. So we would freeze juice boxes and we would literally hack them with straws, right? So that's my hacking story. Um, <laughs> That was my slushy. Um, so, so in terms of scrappiness and being a an, founder, that is not foreign to me. Um, I think what's, what I have experienced at Bain is building a team, right? Inspiring people, managing people, building a process, bringing credibility to clients. Um, I think customer acquisition, we have, like I said, we went to Google first, realized that didn't work. So I think under working with lead partners who've done that, there are people in this space, um, has been probably the biggest insight, uh, but we're scrappy and we're hopefully credible. Okay? Thank okay. you. Thanks, guys. Thanks.